We turn now to the chaos and violence in Haiti as powerful gangs continue to overpower the Caribbean country following the resignation of its prime minister. The U.S. State Department sending chartered planes to Haiti rescuing 30 Americans over the weekend with an unknown number still stranded. As the violence continues to surge, aid groups say a mass humanitarian crisis of famine is emerging. Joining us now with the latest details from Haiti's capital of Port-au-Prince is our own Matt Rivers. And Matt, I'm just curious kind of what you're seeing right now. What are the latest developments? Yeah, yeah, hi guys. It, it's a very brutal situation here. There's really no other way to describe it. I mean, we arrived yesterday, we took a helicopter in, which is really the only relatively safe way you can get into Port-au-Prince these days. This place is effectively cut off from the outside world. I've been here many times over my reporting career. It takes a lot to shock me when it comes to Haiti. Uh, and, and yet what I saw yesterday really did shock me. In neighborhoods that I've seen, that I've been in before, entirely decimated by this ongoing gang violence against the sitting government here trying to topple the sitting government truly truly horrific stuff here as this humanitarian situation goes on and just I'll, I'll just say yesterday not far from where we are we heard the gunfire 13 people were massacred in the street within a, a quarter mile stretch and this is difficult stuff to talk about but this is the reality of, of what's going on here in Port-au-Prince that is the reality there what do we know about the Americans that are stranded we know about the 30 that were chartered by planes out of there yeah, so what we've been trying to, to do is talk to the State Department and figure out, okay, exactly how many Americans are here, where are they, and how many are trying to get out. And for the first time yesterday, we actually heard from the State Department saying that nearly a thousand Americans here in Haiti, the majority of which would be here in Port-au-Prince, have reached out asking the State Department for assistance. You have to fill out a certain form, registering with the government, saying you want help to get out, and so that is what they're doing. Also yesterday, we heard from the first time that the U.S. government said it will soon begin evacuating helicopter flights from the U.S. Embassy compound here in Port-au-Prince. It's not too far where we are uh, right now, but they don't know exactly when those flights will start. And also, it's difficult just to get to the embassy complex. Within the last few days, sources here in the police uh, community have told me that gangs and police have been fighting within one mile of the entrance to the U.S. Embassy. So even if you get on one of those flights, you're going to have to run a gauntlet just to get to the embassy. Yeah, you mentioned this is all happening because of this power struggle that's going on right now. Let's talk about these gangs. Who are they and, and how much control do they really have? Gangs have always been a problem in Haiti, going back a very long time, but really the inflection point came in terms of them increasing their power after the assassination of Haiti's president in July of 2021. They have sort of filled a political vacuum that has not been filled by the state, growing their power, increasing their territory, increasing the money that they make from arms and drugs trafficking, to the point where, depending on the estimate that you believe, at least 80 to 90 percent of this capital city is under gang control. That's a staggering number. Number, but what's really changed over the last month is that these gangs, competing alliances here that used to fight each other, have now loosely aligned to focus all of their energy, all of their firepower on the state itself. And that is what really has changed the game here in Haiti. And that's why we're talking about Haiti now as a failed state rather than a government fighting the gangs. And Matt, we have seen the pictures of the devastation there. Uh, talk about the humanitarian crisis. Uh, what do we know when it comes to aid being able to be delivered to those who need it? The airport is closed. Yeah, I mean, there is no aid getting in. I mean, full, full stop. There's no food getting in. And in the port, there's one big port here in Port-au-Prince. It's just down the, the valley there behind us. So I can see it if I look to my left. There's no aid getting in. The gangs control that port. No food is getting into the country. I had a conversation with a humanitarian here yesterday who said within the next 10 days, Port-au-Prince will could run out of food in a lot of different areas. I've had conversations with the country director of the World Food Program who is saying similar things. It is hard to put into words the gravity of this situation. This is an island country. Its border with the Dominican Republic has been closed. The port has been closed and gangs control all the ways in and out of the city. And that is how gangs hold leverage by controlling that, keeping any supplies that might get in for themselves. Meanwhile, the several million people that live in this, in this city are, are quite literally going to begin to starve at some point if some solution isn't worked out. Mm, just an incredibly dire mm -hmm. situation. Matt Rivers, thank you so much for your reporting there. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching.
and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.